right, it's Tony from Poking Around again, and today we're gonna make a, something really, really special. Um, it's a dessert. It's a very crispy dessert. Now you know that the, the football season is ending and the hockey game is starting, and you're getting your friends over and you wanna make some nice treat for them so they can watch the game. So this would be perfect, and the kids love it. Now there's many different varieties and different ways to make this. I'm gonna make it more of an apple cinnamon topping. So let's get on with it. So welcome back. What do we have here? Two and a half teaspoons of dry active yeast. Half a cup of warm water, not hot water, but warm water, and half a teaspoon of sugar. So what we do is we blend that very, very gently to get well blended in to activate properly. And once that's stirred, we put it off to the side and let it froth. And we are back. So take yourself a large bowl, take one of these fancy, fancy spoons, and we take some all-purpose flour. I have here two and a half cups of flour. Put that in. And three quarters of a tablespoon of salt. I'm just going to buy it. And a quarter cup of sugar. You can use white or you can use brown. Half a cup of milk. Use any type of milk. One egg, slightly beaten. And about one tablespoon of oil. I'm just going to eyeball it. And about half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And we can add more, you can add less. And now what we do is we just mix that all around until we get a dough. When you get into about here, take your yeast uh, mixture here with the water and the sugar and you pour that over very, very gently. And now you mix that all around. Now at this point, you can see it is still very, very liquidy. And the reason I like it to do this way, I don't add all the flour in, is because we get a better stir and a better consistency as we add the flour slowly instead of all at once. So now, take some more of your flour and just very gently add it in little tiny patches, but a little bit at a time, not too much, and work your batter. You just keep on adding more until we get it that it goes into a ball. So just add a little bit at a time. And now you can see that the dough does not stick anymore to the pan. And you take your dough mixture and just drop it off. Now what we're gonna do, you can see it's easier to work with. Now if you find a little bit sticky, just bring the flour into it. So right now, see it's still a little bit sticky. So what we do, add a little bit more flour. Don't worry about it. Flour is cheap, you can use more of it. And I'm just going to work it until it does not stick anymore on my hands. See, now it's starting to bounce and it's not sticking very much. So now, I'm gonna add a little bit more flour and I'm gonna start kneading that. And the way I do it is I bring it this way and push out, bring it, push out. This is the way I do it. Now, if your grandmother has another technique, or your mother, just follow their technique. This is the way I do it. This is the way I find that it works. So now, we can do the crisscross motion. If it's still sticking a little bit, a little bit more flour now. And I want you to keep on doing this for five minutes. And roll it in. And I take the pan that I used, and you know that it's ready when you push down and it basically springs up like that. So now, put it in the pan like that, put it in the bowl like that, grab yourself a nice kitchen towel that is clean, and I put that on top like this. And now, we let it rise for anywhere between one hour to two hours depending on the room temperature. 
Okay, and we're back. Now this has taken two hours to reach this point. So, remove the plastic. Now we get the power. And we put it on the table like that. And we take our dough, that is moved, and we push her back down. And if it sticks a little bit, just get some flour. Okay, there's our dough. And now, we just break it into little pieces like this. About that big. So, you take the measurement like this, the size of your pot, and we just roll that in. And we make little balls like that, so we now break the rest. It doesn't matter if one's a little bit more bigger or a little bit more smaller. It does not matter. So we take these and roll it into little tiny balls, just like that. And now you take a tray, uh, put some flour on it, a plate or a tray that's warm. And you take your little round little pieces, and now you take that and you cover it for one hour and put it into a warm place. Okay, while our dough is rising, uh, we are now going to make the toppings. Now for this type of uh, beaver tails, I'm going to be doing an apple topping. So, here we go. Pan is hot, we add about a little bit of butter. You can add more, you can add less. Let's say this is about, what? Close to one quarter of a cup of butter. And we bring the temperature down low. We do not want to burn the butter. We just want it to melt at this stage. And now we're gonna add the apples. Now I have here two different types of apples. Here I have a Granny Smith, and here I have close to a Fiji apples. What I would do is use two or three different types of apples. It just works better and tastes better. And of course, they're all cored and diced. And we put that into the butter mixture. And we move that all around. Some pieces are bigger, some pieces are smaller. Who cares? The food inspector is not around today, so you can get away with it. And we keep on stirring and cooking this until they become soft. Okay, you can see now that they're softened. You can cook them a little bit more if you want, but for me, at this stage, it's absolutely perfect. Now, I take some corn syrup and I add about two tablespoons. Now you can add more or you can add less. Turn that around. And about one tablespoon of maple syrup. There you go. Now you can add more or you can add less. Now we're gonna let this go for about another minute. Oh, does that smell good? Now, if you want, instead of what I put in here, you can add any type of syrup to that if you want. You can add honey to that if you want. Or even just plain sugar, brown or white to that. But the way I do it is the way I like it. So now you can see that all the sweetness of the syrups have infused into the apple, but we're not done yet. I take a little bit of cinnamon, not too much, and I'll explain to you why, and you just stir that in. I'd say that's about half of a teaspoon, and you stir that in. Oh, the smell of that. There is our delicious topping. And now for our other topping, take a little bowl, take some brown sugar, and put in about two tablespoons of brown sugar. Take some cinnamon and put in about, I would say, one teaspoon. And we just shake that all around. And we put that to the side. 
Okay, here they are. They've been sitting for one hour. They raised a little bit more. And what we do is, you notice that I have some smaller, I have some bigger, it doesn't matter. So what you do is you take this, and you just basically just start squeezing it and bringing her out like this into an oval shape. And just use your fingers, don't use a roller for this. And hold the top like this, and just start squeezing it like that. And try to get it as even as possible. Now, if you find trouble doing it that way, just put it on the bottom, like this, and just squeeze it down like this. And we stretch and squeeze. And that's basically what we are looking for, our cocktails. And now I'm gonna do all the other ones. And all done and ready. And we have uh, two inches of oil here frying. Take yourself a little piece of dough, make it into a, like a little scooping bar, and just put it in there and just see how that bubbles. See how that bubbles? So now we know it's fine. We're going to lower the heat just a little bit more. We take one of our delicious beaver tails and we just throw it in there like that. Now I can only do one at a time. And the temperature will drop and be perfect as soon as that hits. Now just give it, now as soon as it starts getting golden brown on one side like that, just a little bit more, we are going to flip her over. And to flip it over, I want you to use two handy dandy spoons because I don't want this thing to splash back on you because it's really really hot. And you just flip it over like that. See how that's turning out? And we wait a couple of seconds on that one. And she's done. You take a rack, you grab a bit of tail, and you put it on the rack. And then we are going to, and then we just flatten her down. Now, as you can see, they're coming really, really nice. And this is the way they're supposed to turn out. If you see by any chance that they're not cooked properly, by taking a piece here and tasting it, and you can see that it's not cooked properly, then what you do is lower the heat a little. So, now, what do we do? We take our mixture of sugar and cinnamon and we just take that and we just sprinkle that all the way around. If you want a little bit more cinnamon just you just go right ahead and put it. If you want a little bit more sugar you just go right ahead and you just drop it in like that. Now we're not finished. The raisons of the raisons. My apple mixture. And you take like that and generously, generously you put that on the apple. Now to finish this off to make it perfect, we're going to take a little bit of icing sugar, but you can't tell nobody, you just drop it like that. It's snowing. Now, you tell me, how does that look? You want to take a bite right through the screen. It is absolutely delicious. Take a look at that. So now, thank you very much for being with me. I hope that your team wins, whatever team it is that you're watching, either hockey or football. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share this recipe with you. Please enjoy, and I'll see you again on my next cooking recipe. And thank you very much. Go Beats Go!